Is Mr. Olson here now? Yes, sir. All right, you may take the chair. Will you raise your right hand, please? You do solemnly swear, no matter now pending before this committee, you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I mean, here, uh, Senator, I've been traveling a good deal about the country on various missions. I'm an artist, a singer, also I've been in the South and the West all over helping, singing for certain charitable organizations. And uh, coming to the bill, I see first is to protect the United States against so-called American subversive activities. I presume, since the United States doesn't exist in abstraction, that it means the people of the United States. That would be more or less all right, wouldn't it? I, I would think so. Uh, I'll get back to other sections of the bill. It says in the section two, uh, uh, in the second paragraph, that uh, in the question, the question of the necessity for the legislation, that it's uh, uh, necessary uh, to uh, protect, to establish and set up a totalitarian dictatorship in any country results in the ruthless suppression of all opposition to the party in power. This is what I'm interested in, this complete subordination of the rights of individuals to the state, the denial of fundamental rights and liberties which are characteristic of a representative form of government, such as freedom of speech, the press, the assembly, the religious worship, and result in the maintenance of control over the people through fear, terrorism, and brutality. I have been all over the United States speaking and attempting to speak, and I have been experiencing in our own country today this very thing of control over the people through fear, terrorism, and brutality. This is happening in all parts of this land. Now, uh, it seems to me that we're protecting the people of the United States, that these protections are necessary from quite another point of view than I can see in their so-called necessity in this well, necessity. Well, do, do you believe that they are uh, I'm saying these, uh, entitled to protection even as provided I just want to finish that point, and I also, again, want to say uh, that it says that uh, The complete subordination, the same paragraph, the complete sub subordination of the rights of individuals to the state, denial of fundamental rights and liberties, and so forth. I uh, uh, think that uh, this is a complete, for example, a definition, since our states are sovereign powers, so to speak, except for the rights delegated to the federal government. A complete description of, say, what happens to Negro people today in Mississippi, Alabama, and many other states of the Union. And uh, the necessity for legislation, it seems to me, I, I will go into what I consider the constitutionality, the denial of civil rights under this bill, in fact, to the whole question of, our, of the way uh, we have placed this whole question in the bill. But it seems to me that the necessity for legislation that might concern, I suggest, with the, 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 the committee today and, uh, and for some time to come, uh, that since the, in this bill uh, perhaps hundreds, thousands of Americans would like to speak on it, uh, and that, it should, uh, that not only today but perhaps in the future there should be opportunity for that, I am tremendously interested, before approaching the, in detail this bill, uh, just to ask you a question as to why in the light of the terror that I've seen and the denial of rights, uh, that the lynching bill is not sort of before the Senate at this time. It hasn't come out of the committee. I couldn't answer that. I'm personally trying to get it out of the committee. I think that uh, uh, that if there are any kind of activities that strike at the very basis of our democratic way of life, that uh, uh, that, these, that this bill sh certainly should come out. Both parties have, have uh, gone on record for the civil rights of the Negro people. And uh, it looks as though you might get through without it. So I'm certainly hoping that uh, that uh, this bill will come out, and perhaps even this bill could be uh, put aside for the moment and extended later to see that these rights 
should be uh, uh, somebody should, should be guaranteed. Now, as for a bill, I see it, the whole question of protecting the rights of the people of the United States, against the background and the whole question of communism, for example, which is brought in every Mr. minute. Mr. Robinson, uh, uh, just can I go on to my, can I, can I go my question? Yes. I'll, answer, I'll answer that in just a second. Are you a member of the public? I will party? answer that in just a, just a moment. Can I go on to my discussion? Yes. I will answer that. Uh, the whole background, I would say so, I would strike at the very root of the conception of, of, of what is in these first paragraphs. Uh, the, for example, the origin, uh, uh, the uh, world movement with its origins and so forth. I mean, does Mr. Munt or whoever framed the bill understand that the origins of this kind of thing were in, say, the English Industrial Revolution and the time of Robert Owen? In the, in the roots of, a, of the poverty of England, which it was responsible for the English poor and indentured servants coming to build America itself. This doesn't just spring up the other day in some uh, part of Europe, a part of the whole struggle of human beings to improve their lot. One of the most important sections for myself being my own people here, the Negro people in America. So I see the whole framework of the bill, in reality, from my travels about this country and otherwise and about the world, in the framework, of what we understand as Americans, of and what we mean by our democratic ways of life here is expressed in this paragraph, that it means certainly from our own American history, from the beginning of our struggle for freedom from England, down through the Civil War which freed my own people, it means to the New Deal an extension. We have no, we, we mean anything, we mean an extension of the democratic rights and full citizenship to people who do not yet have them. That would include not only one-tenth of the population, the Negro people, it would include, for example, many of the Spanish-American pe people that I saw in Pueblo, Colorado a few months ago, perhaps living in hovels under the ground. It would include many in the fruit fields of California, in the whole deep south and all over America. But, but, and so, in, a, in approaching uh, this whole problem uh, of, of, uh, of the struggle today in Europe and elsewhere, what has happened uh, in, in 1917 in Russia, what's happened in Yugoslavia in many places, it has to do with trying, with, with millions and millions of people who, who are denied very basic rights, economic, social, and political, of building, of trying to build a decent way of life. Against it has been, have been many forces, the most important of which we join hands against, the forces of fascism. Now, in going about America today, I say, that those, when I was in Kansas City and I see the police beating workers over the head because they want a decent living, terrorizing the Negro people in West Virginia and all over, I say these are the, uh, the essence of, of, of Isaac trying to stop, actually stop the struggle of the people to get the democratic rights which they don't have. And I go so far as to say that I feel uh, I've been in the, the Mr. Munn State in South Dakota. I was attacked by him once when I sang there. But in the whole discussion, and we can take it up in detail, of defining uh, what is a, a communist party, what is the a, a front organization, and what has happened in fact throughout America, where they, they have terrorized people from joining any kind of liberal struggle, right. just a second, uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that this bill has, seems to me to have as its basic idea not to, to help the, the, the people of the United States or any other people, but to actually stop the struggle by terrorizing people to get rights for Negro people, for workers, and for other Americans who still haven't full citizenship. Have you read the bill, Mr. Robinson? I have read the bill. All right, now section four, paragraph one. The certain acts that are prohibited are in section four. Well, they've been the other is right. merely registration. No, but then you can't dismiss the rest of the bill. Well, I, I'm, I'm not dismissing no, it. No, I'm, no. I'm talking about that part. Yes, yeah, okay. Do you believe that it should be unlawful for anyone to attempt to establish in the United States a totalitarian dictatorship, the direction and control of which is to be vested in or exercised by or under the domination or control of any foreign government? We have laws. Foreign organization or foreign individual? We have laws that take care of that. But wait a minute. Do you, of course not. Sure not. You, you think not. that that should be the law? Sure, that's all. We, now have, that's we have laws to protect that. We have laws to protect that. What is the we law have, now? We have, we have plenty of laws to take care of any people who would have to attempt to overthrow this government. No, but what, what is Mr. the... Mr. Hoover can, can take care of that. Wait. That's by force or violence. Uh, yeah. the Smith Act that uh, you're talking about. Okay. Well, this isn't by force or violence. You could do it by other means. What other means? Then? Well, penetration, 
You don't think that Yugoslavia wasn't taken over by the communists, do you, Mr. Robson? I certainly do not. I think the Yugoslav, uh, uh, I say this is very basic. In Czechoslovakia? No, by no means. I mean, let's check Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Czechoslovakia. You can check this up. I happened to be in Czechoslovakia in 1945, singing to American troops at the very end of the war. I, as a singer, was called in by the American military to sing to some Czechs at a big uh, 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 park. And I had been in Prague before the war, and I speak the language a little bit. And I was trying to find out who these Czechs were. So finally, a woman comes up to me and said, I encounter so-and-so and so, and I met you in Chicago during the war. I said, you were in Chicago during the war, I understand. And I suppose you, you expect to, uh, and it occurred to me that maybe she was back in Czechoslovakia to get back a couple of those castles, which had been taken away because those who owned the castles had helped the fascists. All I can say is, and I say this, and I can be called up again on this, I felt that I saw the American military, the only Czechs in the room happened to turn out to be Czech collaborationists and Sudeten Germans. And I would say that the Czech people probably made a decision that under no pressure, even American pressure, would they accept the restoration of Czech fascism, that they, if they were made to choose, they would choose the other way. That's the way I would suggest it. So you, and you, you and as far as Yugoslavia, it just seems to me, I was in Yugoslavia, and I saw the Yugoslav peasants suffering exactly like the Negro peasants suffered in the South. Only they were not one-tenth of the population, they were perhaps nine-tenths of the population. And so when we helped them destroy fascism, including King Peter, whom we now seem to have in this country, floating around, I know him as a boy there in London, saw him around there, I think that, the, that what has happened in Yugoslavia came from the struggles of the Yugoslav people who, with our help, were able to take the power. And as far as I can see, Senator, they're going to keep it. All right, Mr. Robson. What is an American communist? You define that I, I consider an American but, communist. Uh, For example, I know one. I know one. He grew up with me. We came up together. He went to Amherst. I went to Rutgers. I was interested in that because uh, uh, Judge, Sto uh, Judge Stone, uh, I took law at the Columbia University. He was the dean of personal property at the time. He was an Amherst man who played football. We used to talk about this. Now, this fellow grew up with me, was born in Georgia, went through all sorts of, uh, as a Negro boy, uh, in, injustices and, uh, and, 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 and injury to his dignity every five minutes. He came north, went to Harvard Law School, and uh, a dear friend of mine through all my life, still is. He is today on the city council of New York City, a man who is fighting and has made a tremendous struggle for the rights of the Negro people in Harlem and all through the United States. And I know no American that I'm prouder to know and he is an American communist on the on the on the on the, on the internet. And All right. Now, what, 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 they, what do they American stand for? What's that? What's that? What, no. What do, what do they stand for? They stand, as far as I can see, uh, for uh, complete equality of the Negro people in America, which I would like to see in every respect. It might interest me either to know. But in going about the country, I asked university students, when did they think that the Negro people would be completely free in America? Like anybody else, not special freedoms, economic, some kind of special no, freedoms. No, no. They said to me, a thousand years, a thousand years. So I'm interested in a party and in people who, go, who like in the Scottsboro case, who risk their lives, who make every effort of any possible kind to see that the Negro people secure their rights, so the forces of labor. Do you think that's that what communism stands that's for in America? It stands, to, it stands for me. Look, I say, I, that's my basic point. Well, that's what I want to My basic out. point is, Wait, wait, let's just wait a minute. Where, where did communism come from? I'm taking from the first paragraph. It started against the background of the sufferings of the English people in the mills, in the great industrial revolution, wow. but which, which resulted in the slavery of my people in America. Now, in the struggle, can I say something? In the struggle, as I would put it, of the few against the many in history, that is, why did we found the American government? What, what happened? Why did Cromwell come over in England in 1620, 1640? Because the, he said no divine right of kings. And in order to see that in English history, they had to chop off Charles's head. And we had to, to have a revolution in 1776. We had to have a, a civil war to see that somewhere people began to get their rights. So the French Revolution. So I see history as a struggle of the great mass of people to some way get, a, get some fair return for their labor and a decent chance to live. Yes, now, this is what's going down. on in America, yes, Senator. Let's get down to what uh, American communism is. Well, I'm saying, to me, it's a, they, are a, they are a part of this whole struggle. 
the interest, so I, I, I can only define it against its background. Right. You can't say one breath sentence that, that it's uh, American communism, an offshoot of Russian communism. Well, that, that's what I want to know. I say, that, uh, no. What is, is Russian it under the domination? I say, what is Russian communism an offshoot of? Did, 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 uh, did Marx uh, or Lenin or uh, did, did they spring up in, uh, out of the head of the Fini? No. These came out of the social conditions of Europe. Now, in e and, and, and communism began in England, not in Russia. Well, and let me say, so Mr. Today, Wilson, are you an American communist? Uh, Senator, I just let me finish the point. I'll, I'll yeah. answer that question. Now, in Scandinavia today, in Scandinavia today, they have decided to solve these problems of all the resources of the nation being in the hands of a few people by cooperative methods. That is, the general electorate, which controls electricity in this country, they more or less put them out of Sweden by cooperative means. In England today, they have taken over the railroads, coal, banks, by socialist means. That is, by public ownership. Now, this ought to be any mystery to the American people. We have TVA. New Zealand is a socialist country. We, th this is a part of the struggle of people to get control of some of the wealth, instead of leaving it in the hands of the few. I see communism as nothing but an extension of, of great public ownership of the main means of resources, like the railroad workers said the other day, the coal mines, if they're that important, Senator, to the United States, that so every time there's a national emergency, this is life or death to the, to the American people, doesn't it occur to you that instead of beating the workers on the head, that maybe this, the government should own the railroads and the coal mines? Well, this is, this is a whole struggle of which communism is a part. This is a part of the conceptions of the struggles of human beings for ages. And you can't move communism out anywhere in the world. Well, then, do, you, do I understand? So American communism is, you might say, saying, is, what's right. an American socialist? Well, what's an American democrat? American you communism know, is part you know, of the Russian system. Well, but do you know that American democratic principles stem directly from the French Revolution and our own revolution? No They're very about revolutionary that. ideas. No about that. They are very revolutionary ideas. Right. In, uh -huh. in fascist Greece today, these are very revolutionary. Now, very revolutionary. Mr. Robson, let, let's get down to okay. some of the facts in the bill. Now, I, I ask you the question you said you'd answer. Are you, an American, are you an American communist? Today, Senator Ferguson, that question has become the very basis of the struggle for American civil liberties. Nineteen or more, and many of the most of, the, of, of the, some of the most brilliant and distinguished Americans are about to go to jail for failure to answer that question, and I'm going to join them if necessary. I refuse to answer All the right. question. You, you refuse to answer. You refuse this is, to... This, this is an invasion of my right of secret ballot, Senator Ferguson. If you want to know whether I am, the Communist Party is a legal party, like the Democratic Party, Republican Party. I'm going to vote pretty soon. If you want to send some government official to take my ballot away of secret ballot, my constitutional right, he can see just what I am. I see. Uh, have you a communist card in any communist organization, any state, Mr. Robson? That is, I consider, a part of the other question that I refuse to answer. Yeah, I see. And it's a party plan that doesn't disclose it. I, uh, that's what I want to say. say. I don't know. Maybe if I were a Republican, maybe I wouldn't disclose yeah. it either. I would say, well, come to the ballot box and see it. I'm not just what the Republicans do. All I know, the Communist Party is a legal party in the United States. And making a magnificent well, I mean, struggle on many fronts. I mean, communists just, just uh, hmm? refuse to disclose whether they're members of it. Well, I say since you've made, because you, we, they, today, you have made this, this, this goes to the very heart of the bill. I say that this whole hysteria, and the bill is a part of that hysteria, to use this, not, not only to break, not, not to hurt communists, but really to break the civil liberties of every section of the American people. The rights of labor, the rights no, of liberals. But one, this, this, one, is a Mr. this is a very basic. You know something about the communists of America. You've been, you you've been, a, you know something about the communists I have, of America. I have many dear friends. Who are yes, it's perfectly true. And you, uh, you know, I think they've them. done a magnificent job. But isn't yes? You that's think true. they've done a magnificent right. job in America? That's, that's your right. opinion. That's right. And uh, do you know that it is a fact that they, outside of uh, of their membership? decline to disclose that they are communist. Well, uh, I think that they might be, this, this can be determined. The Supreme Court's going to have to move on that. Okay. But no, I, isn't that a fact that, I except know. among themselves, they decline but to I, make it public that they are communist or not know. communist? I would say that uh, if it weren't a basic problem of civil liberties, it goes to the very heart of the struggle in which the denial of these civil liberties, of which I believe this bill to be a part, that's the reason I'm here, uh, this would not be so at all. Uh, have you ever been to Russia? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, have you uh, uh, studied in Russia? 
Oh, no, never studied there. I went there as you, an artist. You never attended no, you any of the... Far, 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 as, as far as that's concerned, you don't have to go to, you don't have to, go to Russia to read Marx or Lenin. No, I understand. They didn't, they didn't give them me a Rutgers incident when I went to college, but I read it since. Yes, but you've read it since. That's right. Uh, you didn't study in any school in Russia. No, no, no. Uh, do you know I was purely as an artist. I knew nothing about them. My first one, 1934, nothing about them. Do, do you know? I went only to sing. Do you and know the head of the Communist Party in uh, Russia, okay. Mr. Stalin? Do you know? Uh, no, I never met him. You've never met him. I've seen him. How much time have you spent in Russia? I was there for over a period, let's say, between 34 and 37. I was there two weeks, three weeks, three months. What is much more interesting, I should think, Senator, is that my boy went to school there for two or three years. My, he, my, my he, one boy. One year, your boy? Because I found in Russia a complete absence of race prejudice. Yeah. A complete absence. What's the, the name first of the question? The first time in my life, Senator, that I was able to walk the earth with complete dignity as a human being. So I took my boy there. He's now at Cornell. Yes. And let me tell you what happened. What, what age was he? Was he was he, eight or nine years old. Well, he was just nine, a... Just a boy. Young. Very important age, incidentally. Yeah? Very important. What uh, school did he attend? He went to a problem? school in Moscow, a public school. Public school. Public school. Yeah. Now, he came, he came, come back, came to, he's in Cornell. He's been back in America many years, went to high school. But in Russia, from not experiencing this race prejudice, today in America, uh, he's quite going to fight for his people and fight in the progressive section of American life with a much easier than I can, for example. Because if somebody would suddenly call me a name here in the room, I would, don't think I would do anything about it, but I'm sure I'd be, I would be, I'd have a tendency to get up and want to knock the guy down. Now, he has no feeling of any kind of thing, because he knows that he lived in a part of the world where there was no such thing as color prejudice. So he's going to be able to make a very kind, very important contribution, I think, to American life. Uh, now, now, this is what I did for him. That's the reason he went. Do you know whether or not the American communist owes any allegiance to the red flag as far as I know, the Supreme Court has been put up only once. No, I they refuse to pass on it. No, no, I'm asking you what you know. I, You've I been traveling all over. Oh, no, no, I don't know. Why, why would they, why that? As well, far as I know, the American communist is interested in improving as far as possible, certainly, the lot of the people here, of the, of the people who suffer, as well as in other parts of the world, where this, where this becomes do, a do part you, of the struggle. Do you know whether or not the American communist believes in world revolution? That I don't know. You don't know that. That I don't and, know. And do you know whether they, they do believe in, uh, in uh, allegiance like to the Communist Party or communism in Russia? Do you know what? That they owe allegiance to. Oh, no, no. I, I don't think that I, I would say no to anything, anybody, anything I know about it. I don't think they have nearly as much allegiance to Russia as certain Americans seem to have today, say, to a fascist Greece or to Turkey or to Abdullah yeah. and Jordan. You, you have uh, addressed communist meetings in America, have you? Uh, President Wilson uh, gave a definition of this, that of uh, the concentration of power in a few hands in the struggle of the New Deal against the so-called economic royalists, in which he defined this concentration of power as the essence of fascism. I'm, I, would like, I, would like, I would like Mr. Hoover to be sure he's got Mr. DuPont tabbed and Forrester and the people. This is very difficult because they, they are our government today. It isn't so easy to get to the basis of what might be potential American fascism. That's what frightens me. And I don't see enough about that in the bill. Well, doesn't, doesn't this bill cover uh, no, I don't uh, dictatorship, so. whether it be fascist or communist? You cannot say that. You cannot define fascism or communism by totalitarian dictatorship. I, I disagree with a very, this is, this again is misleading the American people. That is, it during the war. What's so, your definition of uh, fascism? I would say, to me, the essence of fascism, it, in two things. Let's take the more obvious one first. Uh, racial superiority. The kind of racial superiority that led a Hitler to wipe out six million Jewish people that, that can result any day in the lynching of Negro people in the South or other parts of America, the denial of their rights, the constant daily denial to any Negro in America, no matter how important, whoever may be, of his essential human dignity, the thing which no other American would accept. This daily insult to his dignity as a human being. This is the essence of that. That's the now, the second thing is, no, but the most important thing, which is the reason this can be, is the power of the resources of a nation of, in the hands of the few, in the hands of the few, and the use of the state power, as Hitler or Mussolini or the police in Kansas City, to, to, to beat down any attempt to strive toward 
any kind of democratic rights or freedoms. Even though that be law enforcement? What's that? Even though it be law enforcement? I say, even though I would say this is the very essence of the thing, we yeah. find always that law enforcement in this case is the protection of the property of the few people who are the potential of fascism. Uh, now, what is the essence of communism in America, in your opinion? The essence, to my mind, of communism here, anyway, is the, uh, what is, uh, every day I read in the paper, what does, uh, what does communism thrive on, all this kind of, uh, what do, where, 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 you tell me, Senator, where does the, uh, where would you expect to find your communist? Would you expect to find, say, that Mr. DuPont would be a communist? Well, uh, I, I think in America today we can expect to find them anywhere. Oh, you yeah. Well, no, I would say that... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it isn't a question of wealth. Oh, very much so. I, you yeah, think so? Not a question. Not no. Just, not, no, I'm talking about not a question of wealth in this case. Yeah. A question of wealth where it comes like an American today, as far as that's concerned, where in the, in the end, take the South, well, and then would you, would you, you, the side, you tell me, you tell me who controls the wealth of the South. See, you gave me... Oh, no, hey, let me give you the point. Oh, wait a minute. You gave me the essence of fascism. Now I'd like to have the essence of, okay. uh, let me of give communism. It, let me give it to you. But I, well, I, this came from my experience. I didn't make these things up. So I'm in the South. My father was a slave. A few weeks ago, I'm standing in North Carolina on the very soil on which my father was a slave. Now then I go into the whole history of our civilization, so to speak. 100 million Negroes from Africa torn to pieces and died in the slave trade. On our backs in America, the very primary wealth of America built on our backs cotton, taken to the New England textile mills. What do we get from it today? Poverty, insult, inferior station in life, no opportunities. Who controls the wealth? A few people, a few people. Now somewhere, to me, by whatever means, today, what, by what, at certain times, like in our own history, these means have been revolutionary, in other times, evidently not. But somewhere to me, communism is interested in seeing that those people who are oppressed, who suffer, that somewhere they represent those people in their struggle toward the people. Now that's, that's the essence right. of communism. That's right. And uh, the essence of communism here is the same as the essence of communism in Russia. I would say it's the same uh, universe. The essence it has to do with the struggles of the Russian people against the Tsar's yeah. oppression. All right. It's universal. But they were interested. Exactly like uh, universal in this sense, Senator Burks. You see, I don't, again, I must stop you from what is an American today? And here's what I mean, an American here. So you try to link every American who believes something with this country or that country. Now, Mr. Marshall is on record today that we are no longer American, Senator Ferguson. We are defending Western civilization, whether it's in Italy, Greece, even in Turkey. They've become the great defenders, strange to say, of Western civilization. Now, we have got, we as Americans today are in a world, some kind of world struggle, which we are no longer Americans, we are a part of the world. So you can't isolate this in this sense. Now I say to Mr. Marshall, and I say as an American, I was in Europe. Now if there are Americans who want to support Franco in Spain, let them go ahead. I was in Republican Spain, singing for troops who were fighting against Franco. Mr. Mr. You understand? If so, this law so this is, is this has nothing to do. You can't do it. No, I don't see the American Communist doesn't. He's an American as far right. as I know. If this law like is we were passed. In Jefferson's time, he was an American, not a Frenchman. If this law is passed and the Supreme Court holds it constitutional, do you believe that it should be lived up to? If this law is passed? Yes. Or any law passed. And well, I say, I think this law, first, I'm, I sincerely hope the Senate won't pass it, and I'm, I'm sincerely hope that the, you know, that the Supreme Court will declare it unconstitutional. But if they do, you, you then believe that the people should live up to it? Well, I'm sure that... I would live up to it in every pos in, 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 by trying in every possible way to have it taken off the books. Well, but wouldn't you, wouldn't you uh, live under it? Wouldn't you say that it was the law and therefore it Nobody's was binding upon you? Nobody's arguing that point. That's what I mean. Nobody's it? arguing that point. Well, Mr. Foster told us Saturday, Friday, that he would not obey it if it was In what law. sense would he not obey it? Just he wouldn't obey it. I do not you mean he wouldn't obey it? Well, I, I, I don't know what his, uh, his thinking was, but he said that he would not obey it. He didn't believe that it should be obeyed. That wasn't right. But wasn't registered? Well, well, right. Neither would I register. Well, you would. If I were any organization, I would register. Then you'd be violating the law. Well, then you would violate the law. Well, I'd be, then I would violate the law. Oh, I see. Okay. So then you would violate the law, and you would feel I, that you I, were... This, I would say, this to me, I would, I would fight as a... I would really fight it as a, as a real piece of American fascism. 
That's and you what see, I, what, I, what I'm talking about is after it's declared constitutional by the Supreme Court, let me put then you way. would defy it. Now, let me put it this way, Senator. Uh, let's suppose a Frenchman at a certain time is now faced with a law passed by Vichy. Would you expect that Frenchman to uh, observe it? Under the former Vichy government? That's no, right. it wouldn't be the law. Why not? Because they, were, they, were, they were France at that period. Yes. But they were the government of France. There's a new government there now, and they have... Well, I'm not talking about at that time. Would you have expected those men who helped our American boys come up and destroy... Well, is that the way you classify this law? I would classify it exactly in that category. I see. Then you would As not... As a fascist act. Then you would not obey it. That's right. As an anti-fascist, I would not obey it. Now, you, uh... You recited here that your father was a slave. That's right. You are now, uh, independent... Am I? Independent. Am I? Well, now you wait until I get through. The senator gets uh, his question. You are independent economically. You occupy a high position in American society. You're proud of it. You've been a service in many ways. Now, that's all been achieved in one generation. Can you think of any other country on the face of the earth where such an opportunity has been? Uh, yes. For reason? I would say that... Uh, that Russia? Yes, I would say that... Not one. Now, you don't mean to say that Russian people have any opportunity at all to be anything more than slaves, does it? Uh, they have you said a while ago, infinitely more you, to you, you said a while ago you approved of communism, uh, approved of communism for the deeds of people. Oh, yes. Yeah. They've liberated the whole people. In many countries. Liberated the whole people. They've liquidated the most land. No, 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 no. Not nearly have they liquidated as many as the Negroes were liquidated in slavery, or could be liquidated today in many parts of the South. Well, now there's nobody being liquidated in America today. Uh, why, why do we have a, why should, why should the lynching bill be on the, on the calendar of practically now, anti-lynching bill? Well, I don't know why it should be. Hey, the, you why, 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 why